Hey, this is Lyndon. Welcome back to another ActionVFX.com tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys some really cool tricks and techniques about how you can composite bullet hits into your shot. Stock footage really is a huge part of visual effects, so by the end of this episode, I hope to completely transform the way you think about compositing elements that are not additive, like, like dust, debris, bullet hits, assets that aren't like fire. Some people just use screen blending modes or something like that, and believe me, it's not a good idea. We're going to look at techniques way beyond that, so this tutorial should be very enlightening about you know stock footage compositing. Uh, but we have a great deal of compact information to cover, so let's not waste any time. Let's hop into creating this gunfight scene. So the first thing we're going to do is paint in when and where we want these bullet hits to happen. Let me show you what I mean. So just double click on your footage and you can go up here and click this paint tool and you have the option of painting on your footage. So we can choose whatever color we want, doesn't matter, we'll use red. And then we're going to do duration single frame. So this paint is only going to last for one single frame. So then we're just going to paint in a whole bunch of places where we want these bullet hits to happen. So maybe one right here, we'll just go ahead and paint in a dot right here. And that's going to symbolize that a bullet hit is going to happen right there. So it only lasts for one frame, so just one frame it happens, just like that. And then we'll go forward and maybe have one happen over here. And then maybe just kind of travels along this line. So we'll make one happen here, go forward a little bit more, then one happens here. And maybe one comes up here on the wall. So we'll just go ahead and paint in a bunch of places where we want these bullet hits to happen. Make it kind of follow a path. I found that to be really helpful. So there really is an art to making it look natural, these bullet hits. But you're, you're probably going to have to paint in some dots and then make some adjustments to the timing to make it seem natural and make it happen in the right place and things like that. So once you've painted in all those bullet hit spots, what you're going to do is create a marker on your footage so you can visualize here on the timeline when each bullet hit happens. So right here there's a bullet hit, so what we'll do is click on our footage and above the number pad you'll see an asterisk and you can click that and it's going to add a marker to your footage. So now you can visually see when that first bullet hit happens. We're going to go through our footage and just make a marker every time we see a little bullet hit. So if we want to go to that next bullet hit, just go to the marker, you'll see the dot here and we'll know exactly where to place that element. So this is going to help us be really efficient. So now I'm finished with that and I can visualize when each bullet hit happens. So this is really going to help us out. So before we start compositing in these bullet hits, we have to track our scene. Because if we place those elements in now, they're not going to follow the camera motion. It's going to look completely wrong. So let's go ahead and track this scene. And the way we're going to do it is a 3D camera track. So I've actually made some adjustments to the footage. I'll go ahead and drag this in. I've rendered it out. And basically, I've masked out the moving subject up front because that's going to make an inaccurate camera track when it tracks the motion of, the, um, of this character here in the front. And also, I've manually tracked in some points and this is actually where all the bullet hits are happening so we want this to be accurate and this is really going to help out with the perspective and so that camera track can really grasp the motion and rotation and perspective with these manually tracked in points so that's really going to help so what we're going to do is right click and do track camera and this is going to analyze our footage and try to recreate a camera that matches the exact motion of the camera in real life and so what we're going to do is go down to here to advance and do detailed analysis to make sure it picks up on all of these points and also we'll do solve method do this typical Alright, so now our 3D solver is complete. So it was really hard for me to position those elements in 3D space here on the ground because there isn't very many trackers down here. Like on the wall, there's a lot of trackers and if I want to make you know an element right here, I can just select all these um, markers and then create solid and camera and it creates a solid in the exact position in 3D space. So that's really easy. But since down here, there's not very many tracker points. If I want to create something here, I can't select it. It's just really hard. It was really hard for me to position those elements in the exact 3D space to make them look like they were sticking to the ground exactly. So I had to create this shot a few times before I finally figured out a solution that works really well. So I hope you guys remember this technique because it's really useful. I'm definitely going to be using this technique later on. So you guys take note of this, um, this technique, uh, this solution. So here's what I did. Um, just go ahead and select um, some elements here on the ground. What we're doing is actually creating a ground plane and we can position it based on that ground plane. It's going to be really awesome. Check this out. Just go ahead and um, select all these points and uh, just like that. So this is going to create maybe a a uh, plane. We'll do right click create solid. So this is going to create a plane with the correct rotation. Check this out. So now this is like the floor. It's oriented correctly. Um, but it's not in the right position. So we could move it in the right position but it, since it's so far away once we move it close the error might magnify and it won't be in the exact right position. So what we're going to do is click on the footage again and uh, 
select these uh, three points that I manually tracked in and uh, we'll right click create solid and so this solid has the right position but maybe not the correct rotation so we'll copy the rotation from this big layer and it has more accurate rotation because we selected more points that are further out and then we'll copy the orientation hit control C and paste it on the solid layer that's positioned correctly so we're going to delete those tracker points and then just scale this up so now we have a ground plane that matches um, the, the floor on our scene so just like that awesome and this is going to be very very helpful and I also added a little grid effect to help visualize the 3D perspective in space. So now, finally, I am ready to start adding in these bullet hit elements. So, of course, I've downloaded some um, bullet hits from actionvfx.com. Go get some. And then this is how it's going to go. We'll go ahead and make it a 3D layer, drag it into our composition, and make it a 3D layer. Um, and, and we'll perfectly be able to visualize where it is in 3D space. So let's just go ahead and drag it backwards, hold shift, and it'll move 10 times faster just like that and we'll just move it down and aha we can see exactly where it is in 3D space because of this ground plane and uh, we'll go ahead and adjust the anchor point so just like that so now we'll be able to scale it up without it changing the position of the um, bullet hit so now let's go ahead and move to the first um, bullet hit indicated by this marker and we can see exactly where it is if we turn on our original footage with the little um, marker here and then we'll drag this into the right point in time just like that so it's about the right spot in 3D space, just like that, and it popped, happens just in the right place. And then we're able to scale it up just how we want because we positioned the anchor point correctly. So like I said at the beginning of this video, some people to blend it into the scene, what they do is do a screen blending mode. And that's a rather intuitive thing to do since there's a white foreground and a black background, you want to screen it in there. But that is not the way you want to go because screen is an additive blending mode which means it adds colors together in in a percentage sort of way i won't go into detail but roughly it adds colors together and that's not how dust works see fire works like that fire brightens it it's additive but see dust is its own translucent color it doesn't it doesn't brighten it doesn't darken it's its own color so the screen blending mode is not going to work it's going to create a unrealistic effect and so here's where the creativity comes in let me show you guys what we're gonna do so let's right click do precompose uh, leave all attributes so let's hit OK and we'll name this we'll just name this whatever pop ground hit I like naming them unique things so I can remember which element is which so let's go into this composition it didn't change anything but this does allow us to go into the composition and make adjustments to this footage so what we're going to do is actually create transparency. Instead of using a blending mode, we're going to create transparency. So a really cool way to do this is do a shift channels effect. And this is a really nice effect because what we can do is take the alpha or transparency from the luminance. So the brighter it is, the more opaque. The only problem with this now is that the edges are dark because it faded to black. So now instead of just getting darker, it gets darker and more transparent. So that's why it looks thinner because it gets darker and transparent. So what we're going to do is, is fill it with our own color. So let's fill it with white, and then you can see there's no changes made except the fact that it's now transparent. So we have before and after. The only difference is now we're able to color it however we want. So you can see that the blending mode is normal because there's a transparency map. So what we can do is actually colorize this dust element however we want by changing the color of this fill effect. So what we can do is actually lock this effects controls panel, and then click on footage here. It's still locked. We can see it, and just maybe select... Uh, a color near the ground just like that so now we make this dust element the right color and we can also adjust the intensity of this fill effect by going down to the compositing options maybe doing something like 75 we can also do a fill effect another fill effect here in the main composition we'll make this kind of white make it brighter and then we'll just blend this with the previous look so double click on the fill effect go down to the compositing options and maybe do like 50 percent so we want to make this element a little bit brighter than the ground so this looks way better just by far better than a screen blending mode because it blends accurately and we can make it whatever color we see necessary so one issue may be that this element is only one color and if you want to add some color variation just create a new adjustment layer and we'll name this fractal noise and you can probably guess what I'm about to do is add fractal noise and then I'll set this blending mode to none so that blends with the transparency much better and you can see here that we have some color variation but we do have to animate this so it blends with the motion of this uh, dust element. So the way I like to do this is actually create a new null object, control turn it shift Y, and what we can do is actually attach the offset turbulence of this fractal noise to that null object. So add an expression by holding alt and clicking the stopwatch, 
and then we'll open the position parameter of this null object and grab the pick whip and attach the offset turbulence to the position of this null object. So now the position of this null object now controls the offset turbulence. This is going to allow us with much more versatility animate the position of this null object, especially since we have the properties of the graph editor with this null object. So we'll go ahead and add keyframes with these, um, this position of the null object and then move back, make it in the right position and then just you know animate it like so. So what we can do here in the graph editor is just kind of take a hint about what the motion is doing and then just smooth it out by creating more curves rather than more keyframes. So we can kind of see what it's doing. Just go ahead and remove a lot of those keyframes. Just fix that. And we'll see how that looks. Next what I'll do is go to this fractal noise and animate the evolution. And this time I'll just probably add some keyframes because I do want it to slow down. That'll be kind of complicated with expressions. So I'll add a keyframe and go to here to the, towards the end and make it evolve. And then I'll go to the graph editor. So what I'll do is just adjust this tangent curve so that it's going fast towards the beginning and then it kind of slows down towards the end, just like that. And if this is not moving fast enough, just go ahead and select both of those keyframes and then just stretch it vertically so it reaches higher values. And maybe I'll just scale this up a little bit, turn up the complexity. There we go, we have some nice um, fractal noise texture. And then we probably want to turn this down because it's too harsh of an effect. Amazing, awesome. That fractal noise blends in so well with that perfect smooth animation, awesome. So now our bullet hit actually has texture and everything. It's looking so good, wow. I'm just showing you how you can be really creative with these elements. Once you do that pre-compose, you can go in here and just make whatever adjustments you want. So now it's looking really good. And we're going to do this for several other elements. Just go in, make those adjustments, maybe add that fractal noise. We can do a lot of copy pasting and just make all those awesome adjustments to several different bullet hit elements that you download from actionvfx.com. So I've got this one, this one, uh, just all different kinds. And we'll do those same adjustments. Alright, so now I'm back. What I did was is put each of these bullet hit elements into a new composition and made those adjustments similar to what we went over before, right? We made, did that fractal noise, went over that transparency, and now we're ready to composite each of them into the scene. So I'm going to give you a little bit more information beforehand. So suppose we want to position this element where this dot is here. We would move it forward in Z space, but there's a problem because these axes are not aligned with the floor surface. Right, so if we pull it forward in Z space, it's actually going to rise its altitude above the surface of the plane because it's not aligned completely parallel with the floor. So we're going to do something pretty creative to fix this. Check this out. What we're going to do is hit R on this floor layer. That's going to open its orientation. And so we'll click on the orientation, hit Control C, and then I'll copy, and then we'll paste it on this bullet hit element like that, Control V. So now this bullet hit element is parallel in all axes with the floor which that's great, now we can move it without it rising above the altitude of the floor, but it obviously doesn't look right because it's not oriented right. So what we can do is actually rotate the X axis 90 degrees so that it stands perpendicular to the ground, but these axes are still parallel with the ground. So we can move it around with it staying exactly aligned with the floor. So even though this floor is tracked in so perfectly and it looks really cool, uh, we don't need it anymore because these axes are perfectly aligned with the floor. And as long as we move this X axis and the Z axis, it'll stay perfectly aligned with the ground. So this is going to make it really easy to move these elements around. So what I'm actually going to do is duplicate this element and then move it around and then I'll replace it with those other elements. And that'll allow us the freedom to be creative with which element we use for which hit. So I've duplicated it, hit Control D, and we'll just move this to that other bullet hit spot. So just move it. And remember, these axes are parallel with the ground, so we can move it however we want, as long as we don't move that green arrow, just like that. So let's move it in the right point in time, just like that. And it should be perfectly aligned with the ground. And let's do that with all these other bullet hits. So you can see here that I have quite a few duplicates of the same element and placed in for each of the bullet hits. So it's just the same layer repeating over and over again. So to add variation, I'm going to replace some of these with different unique bullet hit elements. So for instance, the second one, I want to replace this with this medium ground hit. So what I'll do is make sure and select this second ground hit layer. And then I'll go to this medium ground hit, make sure and hold alternate and just drop it on top and it'll replace it. So we have a really good setup of just replacing each of these elements. So I'll do this for all the other ones. If I want to replace this one, I'll just select it and maybe substitute it with this short ground hit. Easy as that. All right, so now I've replaced all these elements with their own unique bullet hits. All right, so now it's time we composite some wall hits. So we have several wall hits here, just like here. There's a hit on the wall and also over here, we have another hit on the wall. Um, so what we're gonna do is go to the project, 
let's go ahead and drag in a wall hit move it to the right point in time so then let's make it a 3d layer and then for now what we'll do is just do screen blending mode so we can put it in the right position so first of all let's click a for anchor point and we can just shift this anchor point so that it's in the center just like that and now we need to position it in the right spot in 3d space so how we're going to do this is go to the track footage and then just select a whole bunch of points around the paint and then we'll do create solid so this solid will be in the right spot in 3d space we'll just hit p copy the position and then we'll paste it on the wall hit just like that so we'll just scale it up a lot so we can see it let's move forward so we can um, so we'll make it a little smaller just like that and let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other wall hit element we'll go to the project and open wall hit 2 this is another wall hit put this in the right point in time do a screen blending mode for now and then we'll just go ahead and copy the right position so let's go to our track layer and then we'll select these trackers and do create solid let's make wall hit 2 a 3d layer copy the position from the track solid and paste it here so we'll scale it up a lot just like that and we'll move the anchor point so that's in the center of the bullet hit <clears throat> so now let's go forward a little bit now let's go ahead and remove the solid and uh, we'll kind of position scale and rotate this so it looks good let's put it in line with that edge so it kind of interacts with that this little edge here perfect that's generally one thing you want to do is look out for um, how you can make your elements interact with your environment it'll definitely make it more convincing so just like the other elements we shouldn't do a screen blending mode so I'll go ahead and do this with the first element and then I'll copy it to the other element so do a shift channel and we're pretty much going to repeat the same process we did with the um, the ground hits so take alpha from luminance open a fill effect and just kind of choose a color from the wall here double click on it we'll change the compositing option so the effect opacity is not quite so much and then we'll do another fill effect that's actually brighter so we can kind of brighten this effect up just a little bit 15 percent for this effect opacity so in my opinion that looks pretty good right there and let's copy all of these effects to the other wall hit so hit control c hit control v and then turn the other wall hit on all right so we definitely do have the biggest chunk of this tutorial finished uh, but there is some last details that really help the scene so so if you're wondering about these muzzle flashes we have another tutorial that goes over muzzle flashes in detail and so go check out that tutorial it's really fun but there is one thing that can really make or break your scene and that is camera shake so i think camera shake and like fast action scenes like this can really really help and there definitely is a strategical way to go about adding camera shake so that's what we're going to go over so if you don't know how to make a nice camera shake then pay attention because this is going to be really useful we'll make a new adjustment layer we'll call this camera shake and then we'll add a transform effect so we'll also add a slider and basically the way this transform effect works is that you can just control the position by these uh, sliders and parameters but what we're going to do is add an expression to the position because the position is what causes the shake so we'll add an expression to the position and then what we'll do is wiggle and then we'll put parentheses and there's two parameters these are the there's the frequency of the wiggle and the amplitude of the wiggle. So for the frequency, I'll do about six or seven. And for the amplitude, we'll put a comma to separate them. For the amplitude, we'll actually select the slider controller. So grab your pickup up here and select the slider controller. So now we can customize what the amplitude is of this wiggle expression or even keyframe it with the slider controller. For this point in time, we'll make the amplitude be about 50 and we'll add a keyframe and we'll go back to the beginning and maybe make it about 15 towards the beginning. That's really going to help give the action feel. And plus, if your visual effects look fake, you know, this shake can really <clears throat> distract the viewers. Just a technique there. And there's some edges here, so either you can scale it up just a little bit like that. Or if you want to preserve the scale, just go ahead and add a motion tile before the transform effect and do mirror edges. And we'll do output height about 115 and the output width be the same thing, 115. So that's going to mirror the edges. And if, you, and if you don't like the way that looks, you can always scale it up just like this. Just like that. Man, so I hope you just get a grasp of all these techniques and efficiency methods. Like at the beginning, we did the paint, painted in each bullet head. Then, you know, we did the markers and fixed the anchor point for the element. That helped us scale and be free with how we adjust the size. And then we made that uh, floor surface layer. That helped us position each element in 3D space. And then we made the elements perpendicular to the ground. That allowed us the freedom to position anywhere with just moving those arrows. So helpful. And then we had a good setup for replacing any element with any other element. So that allowed us to be creative and free with which elements we want to use and which elements go best with each bullet hit. So it all ends up ultimately making our shot more clean and realistic. Not to mention the level of efficiency. Of course, I just mentioned it. So yes, yes, to mention. Our efficiency game is on in this episode.
Man, so I guess we're finished. Hopefully you have learned some things throughout this whole tutorial. I'll tell you, when I made this scene several times over, there was definitely some things I learned when compositing these uh, translucent dust and bullet hit effects. Definitely went over some sweet techniques that everyone should have found helpful. Uh, so we're finished, man. It's been so fun for my part of uh, learning all this stuff and hopefully from yours as well. We definitely do have plans to do more tutorials going over more interesting visual effects stock footage shots. So we're open to any suggestions. Don't forget to stop by the website. A whole bunch of cool stock footage elements and assets there. Don't forget to download the free stuff, man. Just grab all that stuff. It's all free. And uh, you should find that useful. Alright, so I'll catch you in the next tutorial of ActionVFX.com. Thank you.